Hi and welcome to this video. This is a guide about my go-to engineer loadout. I'm giving away all that I know about playing engineer to you. This is not for free though. You pay with your time that you spend watching this video. If you are serious about playing engineer and want to get better, this video might be for you. This video is all about one specific loadout that I almost exclusively play on Engineer. This loadout is suitable for most situations and it is geared towards a very aggressive playstyle. Engineer is my most played class. I like about it that you benefit greatly from map knowledge because you have a big advantage when you know the optimal sentry spots and ammo pack locations. You can dish out powerful sentries very fast, be it level 1 or up to level 3. This loadout can adapt to most situations very well with an aggressive and powerful playstyle. Let me explain the loadout first. I'll go over the weapon stats and their use. We have the Frontier Justice, the pistol and the jack. Let's start with our crit shotgun that I call Boomstick. This is my Boomstick! You got that? The Frontier Justice has a 50% reduced clip size. That means 3 instead of 6 shots. At the same time, you get guaranteed revenge crits when your sentry gun gets destroyed and you had kills or assists on it. You need to be alive when the sentry gun gets destroyed in order to get the crits. You get one crit for each assist and two crits for each kill of the sentry gun. The stored crits make this loadout extremely dangerous. Usually an engineer without his sentry is considered weak and almost defenseless. This gets turned upside down with the frontier justice. Even if you don't have crits, always use this shotgun on short to medium ranges. On long ranges it deals only 3 damage so I recommend the pistol for that. Since this gun has a small clip size you need to make every shot count. To do that aim in the, a direction where you expect the enemy to go. Then pull the trigger when they run into your crosshair. This is the most reliable way to hit shots with your shotgun. This is especially important when you shoot crits. If you have a lot of revenge crits, you can even spam crit shots at distances. Sometimes you get lucky with random bullet spread and hit high damage shots. The pistol is not often used because many people prefer the defensive turtle NG with the wrangler and rescue ranger. While this loadout can be used and also performs well on defense, it rewards you for playing aggressively. Use the pistol to whittle down enemies from a distance or after you shoot your frontier justice 3 times. Remember, switching to a pistol is always faster than reloading. I also recommend to use the pistol to damage enemy buildings. You can also use your boomstick on medium range and when you are out of bullets, switch to the pistol and finish the job. Remember that random bullet spread can either screw you over or make you get some lucky kills. That goes for the pistol and especially for the frontier justice. The pistol has also random bullet spread, which is almost as bad as with the minigun. Don't be surprised if your shots go all over the place. The core part of this loadout is the jack. This wrench is considered the best by many NGs, including myself, and for a good reason. You have a slower repair rate, deal less damage on a melee swing and even less damage to buildings, that includes enemy sappers. At the same time you get a slightly increased swing speed. The most important stat is this, construction hit speed boost increased by 30%. 
This is why the jack is so good and why the downsides can be neglected in favor of this huge upside. You build stuff 30% faster. You build up a level 1 sentry in 5 swings. The jack is bad at repairing, but that is not much of an issue since you play revenge grid NG. So you are okay with your sentry being destroyed. You even should destroy it yourself if the sentry is at level 1 and has some kills assist on it. Then immediately rebuild it and go wild with revenge crits with your boomstick. Use your jack for many swings. It swings fast and every other hit is a crit. The gunslinger is often considered the engineer's melee weapon most suited for offense. The gunslinger may have its uses, but if you compare the damages of a level 1 sentry and a mini sentry, it becomes apparent that the level 1 deals double the damage. Combine it with the damage you deal with the frontier justice, pistol and jack, and you are a force to be reckoned with. Building order. I have been very successful with this playstyle, so maybe you can draw inspiration from it or even do it completely the same. You don't need complicated jack rollouts with the Eureka effect and the jack. Just build your teleporter entrance when you run out of spawn. Use a right click to turn your building to build it nearer to the spawn door. This is important to make your team use your teleporter and not other teleporters, because yours is the closest one when they step out of the spawn door. You build your tele exit at a strategically optimal spot, but more on that later. So you leave spawn and slap down a tele entrance. You go on with 150 metal. With that, run to an ammo box, but don't pick it up yet. Build a sentry, hit it 5 times with the wrench to make it build as fast as possible. Between swings, pick up the metal. You are at 120 metal now, if it is medium ammo box, which is enough to build a dispenser. After building the sentry, pick it up immediately with right click. This is the secret tech to make this door dot so dangerous. If you have a pre-built sentry, pick it up, run to a good spot and then put it down. You build it in just 3 jack swings, which is almost as fast as a mini sentry. Put your sentry at a location that is accessible to your teammates. Prioritize building your dispenser as fast as possible. This building takes the longest to build. You can erect one in 10 jack swings. It is important to have a dispenser up because it generates metal every 5 seconds on level 1. Combine this metal with some ammo boxes and you have your buildings at high levels very fast with the jack. After your dispenser is up, immediately build a teleporter exit at some safe spot. Your buildings. Over the course of the game, your most important building is the teleporter. It is crucial to create a shortcut for your teammates to the front lines. For that, you need to have a functioning teleporter that is placed at an ideal spot where your enemies don't see it, but it is still placed very close to the front lines. There's a cliche, teleporters win games, but it's true. If you have 50 teleports in one round, you basically guarantee that your team can keep the pressure up without wasting a lot of time going from spawn to the front lines. Your immediate priority as an NG is to control an area, no matter if you are on offense or on defense. For instance, if you are on payload offense, when you place a level 2 sentry that can oversee a point, you basically conquered this area because enemy flankers will have a very hard time to fight you and your team for the territory. Same goes for defense. The area denial with your sentry should be your first priority. If you are on a game mode that has a setup time, such as payload or attack defend, you have a little over a minute to set up your buildings. 
Just don't waste time, set up a level 3 sentry, a teleporter and a dispenser. Ignore Jack Eureka effect loadouts, these are complicated and don't give that much of an advantage. When you are not on setup time, you need to be more careful with your building priority and how to place them. I recommend my build order in this case. So we talked about how and when to use the weapons in what order to erect the buildings. I will talk about the role of your buildings and the loadouts intended playstyle now. Dispensers are also super important, not only for you as the NG, as a good metal supply, but for your whole team. The difference of a bad NG to a good one is where your buildings are placed. The dispenser needs to be in a spot that is easily accessible by your team, but that is also safe from the enemy team's fire. For many maps, there are only one or two spots that fit these criteria. Sentry placement is similar. The sentry mustn't be out in the open. It needs to have a good aim on an important area, but it also needs to be concealed. You can make use of bushes and corners. Same goes for teleporter exits. Hide it in bushes if possible or behind corners. Remember that a good teleporter can keep your team's pressure up by sending a stream of teammates to the front lines constantly. So to sum it up, control an area immediately with your sentry, defend it additionally with your pistol and boomstick. Then ensure a teleporter and a dispenser. Usually you want to build the dispenser before the teleporter to max out the metal it generates. Always have it in the back of your head that it is your responsibility as the NG to transport your team to the front lines fast. Ensure a level 3 teleporter and rebuild it even if it gets destroyed over and over again. Always upgrade teleporters at least to level 2 ASAP because a level 1 tele has a whopping 10 seconds recharge time, so it is basically useless. Also, level 1 teleporters tend to get taken by scumbag scouts, so it's better to have it upgraded sooner than later. Game winning pushes. Timing is everything. When, for example, half of the enemy team members are dead, Place a level 2 sentry at a spot near to the last objective. This ensures your team's victory in most cases. Always pre-build the sentry, pick it up and erect it at the right spot to build it up faster and win the game. The perfect opportunity is when your medic has pushed in with a stock uber and the enemy team is in chaos. Use that brief window of opportunity to slam down your level 2 sentry. Use it at level 2 because it has a lot of firepower but builds up faster than a level 3. Hit it with your wrench during level 1, then hit it only to repair it from enemy's spam. If you win the game, the sentry is not the only thing that's being erected. Wink wink. Fighting different classes. Let's start with Scout. Fighting the midgets is easy as long as your sentry is there. If it isn't up, you don't have much of a chance against a good scout. Once you have a leveled sentry, all scout can do is run away like a weasel. Soldier. His spam can take down your buildings fast, if you leave your buildings unattended. Try not to get hit by spam and repair your buildings if possible. Sometimes, if you are too far away to repair, just accept it that some of your stuff gets destroyed and rebuilt. Pyro. You have the advantage. Pyro can do much against sentries, especially leveled ones. Just don't build your sentry in a way that the pyro can easily walk around it and spam it down with a flamethrower before your sentry has even turned around. Demo. His rolling pipes and stickies can destroy your buildings easily. If a demo caught out your nest, just give it up and don't go up in flames alongside your buildings. Demo is one of your worst matchups. It can be a fun surprise to peek the demo and shoot him with two or three revenge crits 
Since you are a revenge crit NG with aggressive sentry placement, it is not the end of the world if your sentry gets destroyed. Heavy. Heavy is good at destroying your nest, especially with the Jack's limited repair ability. Soften the fatty up with your pistol and boomstick, repair your sentry when under minigun fire and pepper him with some revenge crit bullets. Engineer. You don't meet other NGs super often. Use your pistol to take down their buildings from a safe range. Use revenge crits on them. Medic. You basically just fear a stock uber medic that ubers a soldier, pyro, demo or heavy. If you see one of these ubered, run. If not, you are heavily favored in this matchup. Spy. Your worst matchup. Spy is your counter. If you have 10 or more revenge crits, you can even use your boomstick to spy check. If you have no crits, use your boomstick on short to medium ranges to spy check. Don't take pistol versus revolver duels if a spy managed to destroy your sentry. Always keep an eye out and don't leave your buildings unattended and you should be fine. Don't turn your back while building, always have your back to the wall and jump on your building if spies might be around. Sniper. Watch out for sniper sidelines. As an NG you are an easy target as a light class that is also standing still near buildings. You don't fight snipers often, maybe in the rare instance where you go wild with revenge crits and go rambo mode in enemy territory. Positioning. As an NG, you are a support and area denial class. Your ability is limited if you have to fend off an enemy team all alone. Like most classes, you depend on your team. You merely support it by helping them roll out fast with tallies, establish a supply line with dispensers and control an important area with your sentry. Without your team you can't do much, so always have an eye out where your team and teammates are and don't go in alone. Support the area where your team is to have success as NG. Never build your buildings out in the open or directly beside other engineers buildings. This would be bad positioning. If your team is super weak, playing NG is basically pure frustration. Sure. You can build your stuff, but it will get taken down in no time. Just switch to a class that can deal some immediate damage, or spy, or switch the server altogether. General tips. NG benefits from the right settings. I recommend the NG section of my settings video. The fastest way to get the metal stored in your dispenser is to jump on it if you didn't know. When you select a building in your build PDA, use right click to turn the building. This is very important to place teleporters so that they have the back to the wall and face in the right direction where the front lines are. Use the right click also when placing dispensers and sentries especially. Often you want to build a sentry that is facing an important area, but you build it in safety behind cover. Use mouse tool to turn your stuff the right way. A level 1 sentry is good, a level 2 one is better. You can upgrade it to level 3, but considering that you treat sentries as expendable and you have revenge crits, you don't mind when your sentry goes down from time to time. It doesn't make sense to play level 3 turtle NG that has just one sentry that he repairs over and over again. Sometimes it makes sense to keep your level 3, especially near the end of the game, but more often than not it is the right call to destroy your own sentry and build it back up to level 2 again. If your sentry has some kills, especially if it is level 1, destroy it when the time is right and when there are no enemies. Then relocate to a different spot and use your revenge crits. 
In many cases you can just use revenge crits to defend your nest effectively. And this is it for this video. I sincerely hope you could find some inspiration from it to make your engineer gameplay more successful. I really recommend this loadout because it can excel in most situations and is fitting for a very aggressive maximum damage playstyle. Thanks for watching and please tell me your opinion, suggestions or feedback. See you in the next one. Bye.